conservation education outreach coordinator at Finger Lakes Community College's Mueller Field Station. And thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be taking you on a virtual field trip. Uh, this is good for all ages, so it doesn't matter if you're small, if you're young, if you're old, it doesn't matter. So glad that you're here joining me. So Mueller Field Station is located at the south, south end of Honeyoy Lake. We are in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes area. And it is a beautiful day out. It is spring. There are so many things coming back to life here and it's amazing to go and explore the outdoors during this time. So virtual field trip, not what I'm used to doing, not used to being in front of a camera, but I said to myself, you know what, just do it. Do it for the people that care about the environment, get more people involved in, you know, the environmental cause and we'll see what we can do. So. At this time, Mueller Field Station is usually, you know, pretty busy with school happening. Um, Finger Lakes Community College conservation students come here to take different classes such as ecology, wetland mammals. Um, we have kids come down and actually carry out their own independent research. And then we have our K through 12 program. So field trips coming down, it would have been starting up pretty soon, our annual open house. But you know, all of those things have changed um, because of the current world situation out of our control. So here we are. So the field trip that I will be carrying out today is called uh, Camera Trap Biodiversity. Biodiversity program here at Mueller Field Station is probably one of the most popular among the K through 12 groups that come down. And what we do and what we will be doing is taking a trip to two of our trail cameras. One of them is located in the wetland habitat and one is located in a grassy open field. So what we will be assessing is biological diversity. We, we will be counting the number of species that we capture on camera at each of these locations and we'll see which one has more. More mammals probably, but I'm sure we'll get some birds and who knows what else on these cameras, you never know. It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, so biological diversity refers to the variety of all life on earth. We're considering plants and animals and fungi and bacteria and humans, and each of them play a specific role in the functionality of an, of an ecosystem. So very important. Uh, it's important that we protect biodiversity as well. And being humans, we are probably the biggest threat to biological diversity. Uh, we are consumers, we pollute, um, we deforest, we you know, build on these lands and we, we take away that habitat from, from these naturally you know, occurring things. So it's something that we should definitely pay attention to and protect. And um, the southern Honeyway Valley is abundant with life. We have over 1,200 species here and counting. And a huge reason that we, we have that is because of all of the, the policies and regulations and preserved land that exists here. So I'm just gonna do a quick little panorama for you. So the Nature Conservancy, the Finger Lakes Land Trust, the Department of Environmental Conservation, and Finger Lakes Community College um, all plays a role in protecting this land. So I'm gonna go over some animal sign. Uh, we'll, I'll be pointing out some things that I find. And all right, just stick with me, we're almost there. All right, so before we go out on our hike to site number one, I'm just going to go over some uh, animal sign. But first, I'm going to start with uh, trail cameras that we use here at Mueller Field Station. So here I have a Bushnell Trophy camera. And these are awesome. And they are totally something that you could purchase for your own backyard. If you have land, if you don't, it's fine. Uh, you could put these out and see what's walking about your property. So 
they're all different trail cameras. There are different brands, uh, different pricing. This one is on the higher end of the trail cameras, but yes. So they um, are motion and heat activated. So an animal walks in front of the camera, you have motion, and you also have the body heat that that animal's giving off. And this camera takes pictures in bursts of three. And I will give you a little bit more detail on what this camera can do and what kind of data it provides a little bit later when we took a, when we look at pictures. So moving on to some animal sign. Um, here we have a white-tailed deer track. Very good chance that we'll see this on our hike. Here we have a black bear track. Uh, we do have, have black bear down here at Mueller. Uh, we do catch them on camera. They are or they have been known to go through our uh, dumpster as well, so they are around. Over here, we have a beaver track. Look at that nice webbed foot. Really cool. See if we can find some beaver tracks. There's a possibility that we can come across some skulls or bones. So right here we have a raccoon skull. And then, oh, I wanted to go and t tell you about this. So we have a track finder. This is something great to take out into the field. Uh, if you come across a track and you don't know what it is, you can totally use this awesome track finder. There are definitely a bunch to choose from. But this will help you ID the track. So maybe you're having trouble distinguishing if it's a possum or a raccoon and you have your, your track finder right here. Uh, last but not least, one of our favorites, students and adults, <laughs> we have some fake rubber scat. So depending on what scat you find is gonna give you a great indication of what animals are around um, and what animal left it behind. So here we have some pellet round scat and a great way to remember what type of animal leaves this sort of scat behind is plant eaters produce pellets. So we're talking about a rabbit or white-tailed deer, both herbivores. And then here we have carnivores create cylinders and meat eaters, canines, we're talking about fox and coyote and wolves. Uh, we don't have wolves here, but fox and coyote. Uh, and this might look familiar to you if you have a dog. <laughs> so here's just a few examples of animal sign. Uh, the list goes on. We could find dens. We can find nests. We could find fur, latrines, um, beaver chew. So let's get started on our hike and see what we can find. All right, so we're gonna take a short hike to our first camera. Uh, the first location we'll be visiting is the grassy open field. So let's go. Alright everybody, so we arrived at site number one, which is our grassy open field habitat. If you just take a look around. To the east we do have some successional forest uh, that's headed towards the wetland area. And we are going to go take a look around now for some animal sign and make some predictions based on what we find. So here is a very well-established trail. A lot of white-tailed deer tracks in here. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that. So if you were to guess that this deer was traveling this way, you would be correct. It's hard to see, but you do see those two toes right there. So along with white-tailed deer, 
definitely going to have some other animals traveling this path. Coyote and fox. Maybe some raccoon. I bet if I took a even closer look down at these tracks, I'd find, I'd find some different species, but we're going to keep going. All right, so this is a really cool example of animal sign. If you can see that there is a hole right here. So this is definitely an entrance to a den or possibly an exit. Um, I can't find the other hole, so I'm not really sure. And I'm not sure if this is occupied. It might be old. I wish I can get the camera deep in there to maybe see. But a couple of species that use dens or make dens, um, fox and woodchucks. Sometimes a skunk will sneak into a den and check it out. So definitely adding those to the species, predicted species list. And behind it we have this pretty big rock and downed intertwined vegetation. And this could be good habitat for perhaps a cottontail rabbit. While I'm at it, I'm going to add these Canada geese to the list. They have been pretty noisy. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to take the SD card out of the camera, shut it off, pop it out. And we'll check out what pictures we got later. All right, so... Now that we took the SD card out of this trail camera, I replaced it with a new one so we can continue to take pictures and monitor the species that are coming through this area. So part of setting up the trail camera is re-scenting and re-baiting. So here I have some, um, some Minnesota brand predator bait and it contains fox, coyote, raccoon, bobcat, and fisher parts. And then I have some yodel dog scent lure. So this one's actually edible, this bait. And then the scent lure is just to get them to smell it and come in closer to the camera. And that's exactly why we do this, is to get the animals closer to the camera. We get a better shot of them, better pictures. So uh, just a f quick funny story. One time I was putting some bait onto a stick and I flung a, I flung a large chunk onto this kid and he was in shock and I'm really not sure how much he liked me after that, but I'm definitely more careful with bait ever since then. So, all right, I'm going to go take care of this now. All right, guys, so I have some bait on this stick and some scent lore on this stick and I'm simply going to walk from right in front of the camera across and put these into the ground. And when I'm done doing that, we're gonna head off to our next site. Predicted species at site number one are white-tailed deer, coyote, box, woodchuck, Canada goose, and Eastern Cottontail.
Okay, so walking from site number one to site number two, and we find some scat. And if we remember back to our little rhyme, carnivores create cylinders. And this is definitely a cylinder shape. It's pretty large as well, so if I put my hand here, not going to touch it, definitely not rubber. <laughs> um, it's pretty big, and there's also a bunch of hair in it, so I would say coyote. Too big to be fox cat. All right, let's keep going. I don't know what I'm hearing. Oh! Did you see? <laughs> That's a woodchuck. It just went in some tubing. I'm not gonna get close to it. Even though I really want to. I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> Let's keep going. Mallard. Let's go check out over here. I don't know if you could see that with the camera, but there are a bunch of tadpoles in this shallow part um, of the channel. This is our little launch site for the canoes. Lots of tadpoles in there. I just scared them all away. <laughs> okay, so we are at site number two, which is our wetland habitat. And more specifically, this is a silver maple ash swamp. And that is because the predominant vegetation here are silver, silver maples and ash trees. So this is a super popular um, channel for canoeing. A lot of our FLCC college students come down here to canoe um, and set up trail cameras along the banks. And they do this to monitor the wetland uh, mammals that actually live here. So beaver, otter, muskrat um, are just a few of those. So the K through 12 students also come down here to canoe and sometimes it's the first time that they get to do that in their lives. So it's a pretty amazing uh, area to go and explore. So let's go take a closer look and see what animal sign we can find and make some predictions. Okay, so what I'm seeing at this particular spot, we call it the point. Um, all across the shore of the point, there are a lot of uh, branches that look like they've been chewed on and a lot of mud and vegetation that's been kind of dredged up from the bottom of the channel and deposited here. And that is the work of a beaver. So if you take a look at this, uh, it does look like just a pile of maybe mud, dried up, dried up mud and dirt. Um, but this is actually a scent mound. And these are pretty dried out. But you can definitely see that they've been placed there. And beavers do this as a form of communication. So they dredge up this vegetation, they put it down with their, their front hands, and then they actually slap it with the base of their tail and they release a castor oil. They have a castor gland at the base of their tail. 
And it's a way for them to uh, communicate mating status, um, territorial communication, uh, really cool. So you can kind of see that along the entire point, which is pretty neat. So let's go take a look at... So here we have a branch, and if you, they really want to work on this. Um, oops, sorry, out of focus. But this is from a speckled alder tree, and that would be beaver's favorite food. So there's one right over here. And it's easy to ID um, an alder tree, a speckled alder tree, because they have little cones. Let's see if I can get this into focus. They have cones and they have catkins as well. So they have these two different identifying features. So there's also a bunch of tracks in the muddier parts of the point's shore. And they're really hard to make out on the camera. But I can swear that there is a possum track or two over here. Um, let's take a look at this one. This one's a little bit maybe easier to see. So here, I'll find a stick to maybe point. So this one looks like a little toe over here. Uh, the next one is right there. Uh, there's one right here. It's harder to see. One over here. So we have this track right here. Uh, then there's something right here as well. And you can see a little palm pad. And you can maybe make out some toes, but I'm really not sure about that one. Um, but maybe the camera will give us a better indication and actually capture what species that might have been. All right, so I just took out the SD card from this trail camera and replaced it with another one. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before um, with fading and rescenting. So the only difference here is I chose the beaver caster as the scent at this spot. And... Talking more about castor, um, this does come from the castor gland located at the base of the beaver tail, like I mentioned before. And two interesting facts about this. Um, this actually used to be used in different perfumes and also as an artificial vanilla flavoring. So it's interesting when I pass around these different scent lures to students, lots of different reactions. Uh, typically, ew, that's nasty, but this one actually doesn't get that as often, and I actually don't mind the smell of this one. So definitely going to use this, try and draw in some more beaver. Um, perhaps this will draw in otter as well. And going back to our species prediction list, I'm going to predict that beaver are here for sure. Um, otter i would say a fox would come here for a drink um white-tailed deer definitely geese and um maybe a blue heron if we're lucky some wood ducks some mallards um what else raccoon possum uh, this area uh, is abundant with you know, different vegetation and water. It's a little bit more diverse in that sense than the grassland area. So I'm gonna add all of those species to this list. Um, so let's go check out what we actually caught on camera. So again, the predicted species at site number two are beaver, otter, raccoon, fox, possum, white-tailed deer, Canada goose, wood duck, and mallard. Before we begin looking at the photos from site number one and site number two, I would like to mention a few things. 
Firstly, the data or photos were collected over a period of approximately seven weeks. Secondly, sometimes we capture many different species at a site and sometimes we do not. There are many different factors that could contribute to why this might be. Weather, seasons, disturbances, even camera malfunctioning could play a role, and more. To establish an accurate representation of biodiversity at these varying locations, we make this an ongoing, long-term study at Mueller Field Station. And over the past 10 or so years, we have collected thousands and thousands of pictures so we can analyze, interpret, learn, and better understand and represent the biodiversity at Mueller Field Station. We also take these photos and share them with the community to remind people that we share this environment with many other beings. Be sure to watch till the end for some highlight photos that were captured over the past couple of years. And let's go take a look at photos from site number one. Okay, so here we have our first photo and it is of an Eastern cottontail and I believe that was one of our predictions. So a few things that I'd like to point out from this photo, uh, the camera name is in the bottom left corner of the picture. So Mueller Northfield. Then right next to that, we have the temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And the circle there symbolizes the moon phase. Um, then we have the date and time. So we collect a lot of different data from these photos. It gives us a good indication of what animals are more active during the day or during the night. We can develop a lot of different research questions with all of this information. So let's see what the next photo is. Okay, we have a coyote. Some people might guess that this is a wolf, but we actually don't have any wild populations of wolves in New York. Here we have a white-tailed deer, a blue jay, a robin, and a Canada goose. At site number one, we captured a total of six species, three mammal species and three bird species. Remember, this does not mean that other species do not visit or live in this habitat. We just did not capture them on camera this time around. Let's see what we captured at site number two. Our first photo is of a white-tailed deer. Our second photo is of a beaver. If you look closely, this beaver is in the process of constructing a scent mound. To remind you, a scent mound is a pile of mud and vegetation that is dredged from the bottom of the wetland channel, placed on land, and marked with the beaver's castorium. This is a way they mark their territory. Next we have a red fox. There are two species of fox in New York, red fox and gray fox. We have only ever captured red fox on camera at Mueller. You can tell that it's a red fox by the black stockings on its legs. I included another picture of a beaver placing the scent mound ingredients down. Here we have a female wood duck in the background and a male wood duck in the foreground. They're so beautiful. Canada geese, a raccoon, or as we like to call them, trash pandas. And lastly, a common merganser couple, the female with the red head and the male with the black head. At site number one, there were six different species captured on camera, and at site number two, there were seven different species captured on camera. The data we collected is not statistically significant enough to claim that either site is more biodiverse than the other. Remember, there are many different factors that may have influenced this outcome. The next time I check cameras, I may very well see a larger variety of species at one site compared to another. To more accurately conclude which area is more biodiverse, we can study the thousands of photos that have been collected over the years at each of these habitats. At Mueller, we will continue to monitor these different habitats using tra camera traps to see what species are living in or visiting these unique areas. And every once in a while, a species we never thought we would see shows up.
All right, so that's the end of our field trip. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I, I had a lot of fun filming this and I definitely will be posting more virtual field trips in the future. Uh, please comment on this video and tell me what you liked, what you maybe want to learn more about. You know, I'm open to criticism, no hard feelings. And I do encourage everybody to get outside, especially during this time. Uh, we definitely need to find our center and ground ourselves and going outside and exploring nature is definitely a great way to do that. So yeah, stay tuned for more field trips and see you soon.